have been very much involved in art since the age of 12, probably, and uh, yeah, drawing uh, intensively and uh, being involved in lots of uh, musical activities as well. My connection with Japan began in 2006 uh, when I was sent by the company I was working uh, for um, in Tokyo. And um, that's when from the very first glance I realized that there was a connection to be made between where I come from uh, originally, uh, West Africa, and uh, this place, this new place for me, Japan. And uh, that's when I st really started to explore the similarities between both cultures, trying to create that connection between what you can have and uh, produce and create in West Africa and how Japanese people uh, produce and create art and design as well. So I started with designing, uh, first of all, garments like kimonos based on two iconic aspects of both Japanese cultures, the kimono itself, and West African cultures, the, the, the wax or the bogolan or the kente fabric um, or the ndop that you can find in uh, West Cameroon. The idea of the Blood Brothers came um, a while after I, I had experienced already um, some design with the kimonos uh, in, in Japan. And after that, I had a very interesting, interesting feedback from Japanese customers. I thought it's probably worth addressing another aspect of those two cultures. So that's why uh, I thought of trying to addressing two other icons of both cultures, the lacquer that is very iconic from Japan and the shapes that you have in uh, West Africa through sculptures, stools and different kind of uh, 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 wooden ornament. I thought maybe all the little sculptures that you have in West Africa can be as iconic as lacquer in, in Japan. So. Um, Step by step, uh, I imagined how to make those two icons juxtapose and uh, have a discussion and, have, um, and create that third aesthetic. You know, this, uh, this place where you're not in Japan anymore, not in West Africa anymore, but you are in a new territory of um, language and uh, impact that could be meaningful beyond Japan and West Africa. So lacquer is something in Japan is, that is very iconic as well because of its texture, its depth, the way it's applied and the way it's, 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 uh, it's executed. Regardless of the region in Japan, you have a very particular approach to lacquer that you don't have quite the same either in Burma or in China or in um, Vietnam, for example. The Japanese lacquer called urushi is very specific. The pygmy sculptures originally they were made in southeast Cameroon by pygmy tribes. So they're quite old already themselves. Uh, they were maybe something like 60 years old. I discussed with, uh, with the, the people from the tribes and uh, through discussion and explaining them what their sculpture were going to become, I purchased the sculptures and brought them to Japan to transform them. I decided to work with Masaru Okuara -san Sensei. He's a uh, ninth generation lacquer craftsman from the same family who worked with the imperial, uh, imperial family of Japan. After <laughs> lots of uh, discussion through the, through the year, he, he accepted to work on those tools and try to provide his uh, expertise and uh, his knowledge to my project. The pygmy sculptures originally they were made in uh, Cameroon, southeast Cameroon, by pygmy tribes. They've been around the world, they've been seen, they always had a positive welcome, and uh, yeah, here they are. So you're not trying to destroy what they have, but to give it a new birth uh, in a different place with different techniques and uh, eventually bring it back to them and show them what you have done.